After my May of OK, I finally managed to kick off June with a great read. Girl at War is the debut novel by Sara Novich. It was published in May of 2015 and would close out the year in a number of best of lists. It seemed the perfect book to kick my month of meh to the curb, and it did exactly that. When the book opens, we're introduced to Anna Juric. She is living carefree and playing in the streets of Zagreb, biking around the town square, playing pickup football. She's just another tomboy, freckled, tanned, and perpetually grass-stained. But slowly, things begin to change. Refugees squat in the town square, and the children start collecting stories, tales told from distant acquaintances, second cousins, friends, bosses. Uh, stories of death by landmine or sniper fire, the children trying to outdo each other with the gory details. And in the meantime, checkpoints and air raid sirens become part of the day-to-day. -day. But ultimately, they're still kids, and this all gets incorporated into play. The sandbags that seal off roads going into the city become makeshift jungle gyms, and games of pickup football make way for games of war, with sub-contests arising for those who can make the best and most authentic machine gun sounds and act out the best deaths, extra points given for those that you know, can die with their limbs contorted in unnatural angles and held the longest. But when Anna's sister becomes gravely ill, the family leaves the city and heads to Sarajevo seeking medical help. And that's when everything changes. And that's all I want to say about the book. It is beautifully done. It packs a huge emotional gut punch that can leave you breathless, but it is totally worth the read. And can I say that the cover design by Dana Lee Blanchett and Kelly Blair is absolutely perfect. It is beautiful in its own right, but after finishing the book, it has added significance. Anna would often stare at the sky with her father, and they would extract the same face from the clouds. And later in the book, she would lie next to her friend Luca, their arms outstretched, tracing constellations. But in times of war, that skyward-looking image changes in significance for Anna. As the kids say, all the feels. Sarah's writing is quiet and considered, and you get a sense she finds comfort in the written word. You see, Sarah is deaf. It was a progressive hearing loss over time. So she wasn't born deaf, but the majority of her communication is done through sign language. And American sign language is blunt. There are no euphemisms in ASL. It is by needs frank and direct. And there is an element of performance in what is essentially a three-dimensional language. And that's no more evident than when watching someone like Amber Galloway Gallego sign rap music. But for me to rap like a computer must be in my jeans I got a laptop in my back pocket My pinnacle walk when I hat cock it Got a fat nap from that rat profit Made a living and a killing off it Ever since Bill Clinton was still in office With Monica Lewinsky filling on his nutsack I'm an MC still as honest But as rude and as indecent as all hell Syllables kill a hall that kill them all Sauter's written several thoughtful pieces about what it's like to be a deaf novelist On one hand, she finds herself in an odd predicament of never being able to hear the audiobook of her debut novel or struggling with dialogue because she simply doesn't have the ear for it. But on the other hand, she finds that she can write anywhere without distraction, and the majority of Girl at War was written while riding the Jersey Transit Line. Anyway, a fantastic read that I absolutely loved, and I'm grateful for the book to having kicked off my month so strong, but June is not going to be an especially good month as far as volume of reads, with tons of crazy commitments coming in. I recently had the chance to meet Joseph Boyden at an Indigenous Reads event, it was warm and gracious and signed my copy of Arenda, which I absolutely loved. Um, I recently hosted an event where grown-ups read things they wrote as kids, which featured, among other things, some eight-year-old poetry, some middle school zines, as well as a tween journal entry with tips on dealing with a long-distance boyfriend and being cool. It was a ton of fun. The rest of the month is looking no less busy, so I'm not really going to get a lot of reads in, but I hope you guys have a great reading week, and we'll hopefully talk to you soon. Thank you.